away with only putting down 10%. Okay. And they're not checking your taxes at all. <laughs> this, is, this is fraud. I was in I FHA approved later. Listen, that's a straight First fraud of all, statement. I think people need to understand that. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and we're this is Juan Sanchez, and we are basically we're gonna be doing a podcast today on Bandman Kevo, which I've actually mentioned Bandman Kevo several times and gotten quite a bit of hate uh for it. And since I'm a big fan of people hating me, because I just sucked that in. You when know, you first I, told I, me I, about I, it, I'm okay with it. I, I I use that negative energy to fuel me, so I'm good with it. So I'm hoping we get a bunch of, of uh, a bunch of hate on this video. But I also would like to mention too, for the haters, if you cuss too much in the um, in the comment section, then then what happens is YouTube actually automatically gets in and, and erases it. Like I, we have it, uh, Colby and I have it set so that. All commenters can leave comments no matter what they say. But YouTube, if you get too threatening or too vulgar. Too YouTube, aggressive. Yeah. Too, YouTube will actually remove that. So I don't want people to think, oh, Cox took my, my comment down because you know I, I said he was a, a scumbag or whatever. It's like, trust me, it's not me. I have no problem with you saying I'm a scumbag. I, I revel in my scumbaggery. So by all means, do that. But – we're, we're talking with Juan, and the reason we have Juan on today, I'm sorry, I know that you're going to talk in a minute. Juan's as bad as I am. It's okay. I, I, I'm used to this. So we're, we have Juan on because Juan actually teaches credit repair, how to build your credit, and owned a company that specifically did that and teaches seminars on it right now. So we're going to have him review Bandman Kivo's, oh, wait a minute. Is this, I think this is the one, this is also the one on real estate. First, Dude. I have to interrupt you. Sorry. Because Kevo, 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 Bandman Kevo. At first, when you told you me about. Mom, you think his mom named him that? Well, this is the reason why you are hated. Yeah. I thought this was a boy band when you told me about Bandman Kevo. So I was actually excited that we were going to, you know, have a conversation about the next boy band and something like The Voice. But. Uh, <laughs> that's the comment that's, that's the kind of the stuff one. that gets you guys in trouble. immediately start you piece of garbage like no this is serious we're gonna be serious but we're gonna this. be serious about it because some uh, of the stuff is correct a lot of the stuff he says is correct i mean i know you yeah i mean he a lot of he he has a hard time explaining it, and he never quite goes all the way in on on explaining it so it sounds good it's like when i talk about flipping a house i'm like yeah man i bought this house for 50 grand i put 25 in it and i sold it for 150 people think oh my god like he so that easy, seven, so easy, so easy. Yeah. He did seventy-five. Like it's not one of the shows. And the other, the other thing minutes. is, is my philosophy after serving some quality time with the feds is, if you cannot say it in front of a federal agent, right, then probably what you're saying is not quite right, kosher, if you will. This is very least fraud based. It could be, yeah. could be, yeah. could be perceived that way. It's very trendy, Miami, yeah. very trendy. He's going to talk about how to how to find a hard money lender. You want to know about hard money lenders. What can you tell us about hard money lenders? All right, so hard money lenders is how I got into the flip game myself. See, early on, like, I was Dude, just, you're putting me through this again? Really? Money lender, and he ain't checked my credit. All he wanted to do was know that I had a good deal. If the deal made sense, and I showed him and gave him faith that I could actually pull it off with my with my crew that's going to do all of the renovation work, he trusts me. I like the B-roll. All the money that I needed to flip this house, and then I was actually able to go ahead and flip it, and my first check that I did on a flip up in Baltimore was $85,000. That's what I was able to put back nice. into my pocket at the end of that flip. How do you meet hard money lenders? You can meet hard money lenders by just going to your local RIA meetups, Every city and state have them. It's just a bunch of local real estate investors or, or newbies that's interested in the real estate market. They all get together and have these meetups where they all share and game to each other. Juan and I don't agree on everything, but everything he just said is correct. Like, like he, what he said is correct. He, is it? Yeah, it is because he, I, I don't know what the other guy's name with uh, uh, Kevo here is. I don't know what this guy's name is, but, but yeah, well, how do you find a hard money lender? You can go to your local RIAs. You, you know, the, uh, and and you can you can join them, and they have like a lot of them have newsletters, and you can find yeah. them. Most of the time, the hard money lender that comes out, he'll look at the property. He's not that concerned with you. He doesn't really care if, how bad a credit. Look, if you have horrible, horrible credit, 
and you owe tax liens and you owe judgments and you got there's you're in bankruptcy he's not lending you the money so you so that they a lot of the stuff they say they kind of skate over those little well, things i think but if the deal works if the if the Correct. if the house is going to be worth 200,000 and you're buying it for fifty thousand dollars. Now that means the aftermarket value. Once it's renovated, it's worth two hundred. You're buying it for fifty. He'll lend you sixty-five percent of the two hundred thousand, right? So if sixty-five percent, that's hundred and thirty thousand. He'll lend you the one thirty, provided you don't have it. Your credit is not so insane that you're going you're going to end up having issues when you sell the house. But this is what confused I, the the concept is correct. Yes. Right. Well, that's all he does. Because he, the concept is this. If I have a good deal, dude, I don't need a hard lender, a hard money lender. My uncle Joe will go in the deal with me. Right. Because if I have a deal that is 50000 like you said, and I'm going to sell it in 200, for 200000 I'm going to put another fifty. That's a $100,000 profit. Right. Anybody I, will go on that deal. Well, I understand. But they're not, they're not saying you could be friends and family. They're just saying for an average now, guy who, who was raised on the street, has no access to friends and family that have money, the other thing is you can go the, to a hard money lender. This is a, this is a thing, is what I'm saying. There is a thing. Hard money yes. lenders are a thing, and I, I borrowed that, from tons oh, of them. Tons so of have them. I, and they've they've gotten my they've saved my neck many times. Yeah, many times. But they want to know like the crew that is going to go in. They yeah. want to make sure that the crew yeah, has no, licenses, yeah. have permits. He doesn't go over and all. You know what I mean? <laughs> he doesn't. So it's not like uh listen. I'm gonna go to the border, and as they're crossing, as they're jumping the wall, I'm gonna make them part of my crew. No. Right. These well, guys need to be this, certified okay. and they need to be licensed and all that stuff. Well, initially, so it takes a structure, right? So, so initially, look, what, what he he's definitely right about this is, is that he, he wants to know you have the confidence to do it. So I've I really now after I've started with a hard money lender, I've done several deals. It, it, things change because it's just a guy, right? Typically, as long it's as a long shark, as long as it's not a, yeah, it's not as long as long as it's not an institution. An institution, it, it never changes. But if it's just a guy, and that's why he's right, the local guys are better. So they come in. Yeah. You meet with them. You say, "Look, I'm buying the house for two hundred. I'm buying the house for sorry. I'm buying the house for fifty thousand. It's going to be worth two hundred thousand. He knows the area. He looks around and he goes, "Yeah, it, this will definitely sell for two hundred thousand. If you do the renovations, then he's going to say, "How? What are you going to do to it, though? So you break. Then you they want a, a takedown schedule where you say, "Correct. Look, so I'm going to do this with the first twenty five thousand. I'm gonna do this with the next thirty thousand. I'm gonna do this. And they with release the, the funds as you are doing right, after you finished it. Correct. So they're not giving you fifty thousand to buy the house and the fir- your first, um, you know, your first, uh, uh ser- or your first section of renovations. They're not saying how much do you need. Here's twenty five grand. That's not what's happening. What happens is you have to figure out how to do the twenty five thousand dollars in renovations first. Then he comes out. And, and releases the money after it's done. See, that's the kind of thing they skip over. Contingent inspection and permits and all the stuff. Right, right. Well, it, listen, I've done tons of them without, without it. But you're supposed to. Yeah, well, so I hear what you're saying. Listen. Um, so, uh, especially as you go along. If they, once, once you've done a couple properties and they realize, wow, this guy does a... He, this guy looked like... You saw those. Like, all those pictures can be... They can be... Listen, um, uh, really... Yeah, I'm just saying, if based on the B-roll, those pictures look good. Like, I'm not trying to take anything from the guy. I don't want to... Li- he listen, may be amazing. I, I'm going to tell you what my issue is. The, when, what's the date of this video? September 14th, 2021? 2021. I need somebody to find me a deal. Oh, or, where this where, is possible now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. no, no this is so this, you know, this is a great concept for the year 2023 when the market goes to shit again. Right. Or when it was 2006, when you destroyed the... Oh, no, I, I, that was me. Nice. When I destroyed the market. Nice. That was a great time to do this. Right now, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's impossible. Well, you, but you also have to understand that right now what they're doing is, and you, we'll see this in the other videos, what they do is, this is conversion. He says a lot of good stuff oh, that is actually it's accurate. feeding off the greed. And, and, well, and then he switches you to check out my, my fans only account and, I, and you can join and I will tell you all of the ins and outs. Now, the thing about this guy, and you know, and I hate to... Like, I'm not trying to hate and on I, him. And I know I asked you this before, but I thought the fans-only thing was just to show your penis. No, 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 no. There's, there's guys that, like, there's professional guys that are, <laughs> there, there are people doing seminars, there are people doing talks, there are people. Really? Right, it's just, that's what. Because somebody told me that they, you can look at, like, a 
midgets and dirty feet and kind of like whatever fetish I mean, you were into, you go there and, and you find it. You you can, but you can also, there's professional guys like this guy that have fans only accounts. Okay. And so you can pay him $500 an hour to ask him questions. Or I, I know a guy and I don't know exactly how much the guy paid him, but the guy actually to talk to him for like 15 minutes or something like that, or 30 minutes, the, he gave him like 500 bucks for like a 30 minute phone call. And, mm -hmm. and he said, but the problem was he said the whole time I talked to him, he was like, he was, all he did was like, yeah, yeah, you got to go do this. And he was like, well, how do I do that? He's like, yeah, you got to go to a bank and, uh, and get that loan. And he's like, how, he wasn't telling him specifics. I, I, I'll tell you one thing that I, it always worked for me. I don't, I don't, you know, no, nobody has to do the things the way I did them. But when I teach or what I used to teach back in the days, I love to give people the address so they could check it out. Right. Listen, look at this property. I bought it at this place. Check it out right now. Let's go to Google Google Earth right. and take a view of before and after. That kind of stuff. Don't show me renderings or animations. I, I you or know, B roll. That B roll yeah. may have been. That may have been real B roll. That may be. Look, look. Anyway, <laughs> you're killing me. I'm not but, trying but, to. But, but the concept, the hard money concept, worked. The hard. Money, I think exactly. everybody should know hard lenders just in case of an emergency. Right. You pull them, you know. But it's more difficult than they're making it sound. So basically, he does explain where you can find them, how you can Google them. Like, he's, some of the information is good. That, that Joining those groups is phenomenal. Yeah, right. You can find a lot. Because the thing is, it's more than just, like, borrowing money or finding good houses. Like, these guys will have lists of, like, here's the best drywallers to use. Here are the guys that I use for your, my AC. Correct. This guy's, this guy's reasonable. Correct. This guy will do your house or your, your, and your you roof. Have, and listen, if anybody's checking this video out and you really, really, really want to find these properties where I used to find them and where I have people finding them today is on tax deed sales. Right. That that's so you'll find people there that will coach you and teach you how to do it. It works. We're going to see about uh what is wholesaling. Not that I don't know. I know it wholesaling. Do you know? Cover my place so I know they can't find me. Made it down there. Right, so wholesaling it is very it's very simple. Wholesaling is when you find a motivated seller connecting with a motivated buyer. So let's just say that you sells. found a property and a seller willing to take $15,000 okay. and you know a buyer that's willing to pay $30,000. So right off the bat, you done secured $15,000 for yourself. Then that buyer gonna take that same 30 that he done paid, put another 50 in it and turn around. Let's say they just, for example, might sell it for 150,000. It was a win all the way around. Oh my God. They made they 15. It was a win for you. You put 15. No, you got you got you got to stop this for a second because this this went a little bizarre here. Let me okay, see if I so. understand. The guy he found a motivated seller that wants 15,000. So you check this out. So you bought it for 15, right? And then you sold it for 30. So you made 15. Yes. Because the house is really worth 150,000, which is the what the last guy is going to sell it for. Right. So I know that doesn't... Well, first of all, you got to be some kind of moron if you bought it for 15 and sold it for 30, if it's really worth 150. Well, sell it for 100. I, I understand. It's, so it's, I that's, understand. That's, that's after renovations, though. They don't have the money. He's saying, like, I don't have the money to renovate it, but I can flip the contract. But you, have you ever flipped? I've flipped contracts. Oh, my God. But, but, of course, options. Yeah. Well, really what they're talking about, it's, it, it's basically you're just you're flipping a contract. Like, they're, they're saying, you know... That it's wholesaling. Typical wholesaling is is when like a bank has foreclosed on s massive amounts of, of real estate, and they're just selling it either to investors, and those investors are now selling it again. But I'll, I'll give you an example of this wholesaling. Is, this is flipping contract. My case was based on a property in Fort Lauderdale called Marina Oaks. Marina Oaks was three hundred and some apartments. We sold them for three hundred thousand dollars. They ended up being worth about thirty thousand dollars after the market that's, crash. That, that doesn't make sense. That's, well, that's the reverse listen, of what he's talking I, I, about. And this is the emotional part of the conversation. This is where I feel really bad about this. So <laughs> he feels bad. So regardless of how much money I made, now you had three hundred owners distressed. Yes, that's a wholesale opportunity. You buy for thirty or twenty because the bank took them all. Right. And then you rehab, hold on to them. They're going to be worth it. Right now, I think they're worth like 150, 160. Nice. Maybe if they, if they'd only held on to them for 15 it, years. Well, you know, I mean, patience. So the money is on the waiting. Okay. So. No, it's not. Um, oh, my God. I, I, I flipped it. But that's wholesaling, though. You're, you're, you're a, a, they're, once again, the concept is right. Right. So, so here, here's the problem. Okay. Here's the problem. Now, what he's saying is. Do you know, the difference between this 
And I, I feel like he's alluding to a simultaneous closing, which here's the problem is that a lot of the, the terms that they're using have been diluted or altered slightly as opposed to what the true real, real estate terms Correct. are. So let me give you an example is that part, I kind of feel like what he's saying, and I probably, maybe I missed it. It could be, could be me, me, but he's basically saying, so you're trying to sell your property for whatever, 15 grand. I get a contract with you for 15 grand. I sell it to, I sell the contract to someone else for 30 grand, right? So then that person turns around, they renovate the property, they sell it for 150,000. Let's say, I, I'm thinking that's what he's saying, but here's the problem. You basically need the guy who's buying it from you. He, got, he has to buy it on a cash deal because if that guy is trying to get financing of any kind for that property, he's they're going to see that the property, the title is jumping from the original owner to you to the new owner. And that's a simultaneous closing because you're, you're buying it. I'm buying it. You're actually buying it in reverse. This guy bought it from me for 30 before I even buy it. So I close the same Correct. day for 15. So I get my 30. I pay 15 to the to the original owner the same day and then then it's sold and then the of course the the owner the new owner has it he bought it for, for unless 30. you do it like what i used to do is i will i will write an option contract and i will tell somebody listen you see that house worth 150 yeah yes i have an option for 15 give me 30 yeah and i'll sell you the option right i'll give this guy the 15 and i keep 15 right and i think that's pro that that may or may not be also what he's talking about but, but when but, you get a lender involved but you, you know have who, an issue yeah and you know what in our time we didn't have technology to compete with. All we had was people. You know who's doing this right now? Zillow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, you're going to compete with Zillow. Zillow's paying top dollars to distressed buyers right. right now. And they're buying properties left and right cash. So, I mean, unless you go to like a rinky-dinky town where nobody has a what's, computer or internet. What, or what's, dri what's driving up the prices. Yeah. Um, all right. So, the, so, let's so yes, the concept, real. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, but uh, but not that simple, but not and, that and simple, not possible. Never that simple, and that's the whole thing is that all of his videos, he's he's trying to give you enough to go, oh my gosh, I have to do that, and then he moves you. Well, because you, you, you and you know this I because get this that, is though. I get that. Of, this that's the nature of our crime. Yeah, the nature of our crime was taking just providing very little information and taking advantage of of the people that got you know enough to make a decision. Right, but it's not the right decision. Right. Well. All right, so let's let's uh, let's keep going. Now, everybody want to know how to make six figures in real estate. Listen, if you want to really? make six Wait, figures uh, well, off the to... back, you don't got no money, you ain't got no credit, you might not even have a job right now. I'm about to give you all the sauce on how you can do that right now. So what you can do is do exactly what my brother did. He's 21 years old, working at Amazon. So he's got a bit of a testimonial issue. Listen, I can bring you right now. 150 people that are my students that I don't know. Right. I may not even like them. Right. But they have results. They're not related to me. They, but this whole, let me tell you how I did it. And you know else, who else did it? My little brother. I, we, you, and you know who else did it? Well, let's, my let's, grandmother, but she died, so she cannot be here today. You know how much hate you're going to get me, bro? I'm trying I'm, to not get I'm, hate I'm for I'm this. I'm sorry. But yeah, so you're going to make, show me how you make six digits, please. Okay, he's going to show you So right I now. can take a picture. He's going to show you how you did it. Okay. Okay, so I'm playing now, and it's at, we're at three minutes and 35 seconds. All right, so. So I, sleeping on the couch, I gave him a chance, he jumped in the real estate industry and completely changed his life. All you got to do right now is do what's called joint venturing. A joint venture is just when you partner with another wholesaler to get the deal done. Instead of going out and trying to locate a bunch of motivated sellers, all you need to do is focus on finding all of the other people that wholesale and connect all of the buyers that you have with the sellers that they have and get paid for it. It's that simple. What can that's somebody simple, do that's what are you doing with this not, not looking to podcast, really not wholesale real estate, yeah, be but really that. looking to make money, you know? And, like a first time home buyer. Cover my place so I know they can't find me. Oh, Made this is the damn good, strategy. Dump off a packet. She said it ain't tricking if yo, I got it. This is true. This is a real strategy. <laughs> Listen, this is, this is, I hear, I'm, real, I'm, I'm just I hear reading. real guys, I hear real guys talking. Is I want to show you something. I want to show you strategy. something. And I want Kobe to. It's a real to, thing. I want Kobe to focus on this for a second. You know, when you get to a point in your life where you say, man, I'm successful. It's usually when you are. When you realize that somebody that is successful at something is doing what you are doing. And you say, okay, so I guess I've reached that level. So I want to show Colby something. Check this out, baby. 
Oh, same, <laughs> sh same shoes that guy had. I made it. That's when you know you have made it. All right. So let's talk about the no money, a uh, hundred grand with a, you just find a bunch of buyers and a bunch oh, of you sellers. Want to talk about that. Okay. Yes. Once again, there is truth to that. Yeah. But not on real estate, on every business. Yeah. People get caught up on the product. There is money on the leads. Leads is where the money is at. Right. Listen, man, if you sell insurance, I don't need to sell insurance to make money. I just need to sell you the clients right. to make money. So, yeah. Listen, I think anybody that is looking at this, they should look at how to make a, a landing page, how to market that landing page, get the clients, and sell them to somebody. That's well, it. Right. Okay. Well, here's here's the one that, that gets me, by the way. Okay. So, th this is the one. It, it is the, the birth right? And it is a real strategy. Of course. And it is so... So, but when you listen to it, as as someone who owned a mortgage, a brokerage business, a mortgage company, um, someone who's a, a, I was a licensed uh, FHA and VA lender. We did, we also did conventional and subprime loans. I have a lot of experience, and all of that experience and all of that stuff is still being used to this day. And there, it are, hasn't changed. No, everybody's like, oh, well, you can't do this no more. That's not how it works. The guidelines exactly haven't changed. Works. Yeah. The difference is the only difference is when I was doing it, you had to have a 620 credit score and they raised it to 650. Well, guess what? They raised it back down. It's 620 again. Correct. So nothing's changed. And it's still 3% down on FHA and it's right. still first time home buyers and all this stuff. Right. No, nothing has changed in the industry. So here's this is the part that, that kind of kills me because he says it and it just it sounds so like it's like, wow, real. That, it does. It sounds real, but it's, it's, it, once again, you're not getting enough information so that it's like saying, Correct. Hey, go apply for this credit card. And we'll see this in the next video. Go apply for this credit card. Just go get the credit card and you apply and this and that. You know but what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the app roller. Remember the app roller? Yeah. Yeah. I saw the So back. you had these people with like a big belly and then somebody will show up and say, listen, you want to lose it? Yeah. You want a six pack? Yeah. The app roller. It, anyway. Like this every day. They don't tell you that you have to change your diet. They don't tell you yes. that you have to move and do cardio and all that stuff. Right. This is the ab roller of real estate. So let's check out the ab roller. Hold on. Got that oh, little bit. Right. What the burn strategy is when you buy a property, you're going to renovate the property, rent the property out, refinance it. Then I'm sorry, stop right there for a second. Please, please, for the love of God. Okay. Is this refinance? Is that. Huh? Is what? that refinance? Ref, ref, oh, is it spelled wrong? Oh, wow. It's probably a typo. Oh, oh no, no I, I listen, I'm new on this thing. I don't know. It could be something new that the banks are doing. You know what's really funny is that, you know, I wouldn't mind doing a video with uh, Bandman Kevo. However... We tried that already with Big Herc, and that didn't work, man. Yeah, no, the Big Herc thing didn't work. Please, well, this, this guy, stop oh, no, cooperating. No. Stop, stop doing collaborations. L listen, this guy... This guy, I think he went to prison for two or three years for a credit card fraud. I think that's what he did. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm somebody had told me that he had already he did federal time. Listen, listen. At the very least, he came out and he made a bunch of money. Oh, like no, he, no, no. He's, like it's not. It's not. Listen, it ain't cheap to rent that boat, to rent that fucking land, to the, rent the Lamborghini, the to jewelry, rent the nice car, to rent all that jewelry. Yeah, that's, that's that's. And the sale of information. That's a real business right oh, now. Oh, that, that's amazing. Yeah, he, he's yeah. doing good. Of, of course. So, I'm just joking. I'm sure he owns all that stuff. That was just a joke. All right, hold on. Here, I'm going to see if I can get my my hatred in the comments down for once because I'm jacking it up like you can't believe. Like, it, it's real. It, Colby, Listen, is it not I'm, out I'm, the fucking roof at this point? I'm here. And I don't even feel like I'm, I'm being hateful. I'm here to balance this out because people do love me. Because the thing is, I would say all this if the guy was there. Oh, well, I would say that if he was here. This is this is my argument. English is my second language. So oh, I, I know. I understand. All right, here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so here it is. So we're at... We're at yeah, we're at four minutes and thirty-one seconds. By the way, this strategy, are they gonna see this screen on the on the in the yeah, video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is the brrr strategy. All right. That process. If you do that over and over and over again, you'll be able to build up your net worth. You can liquidate all the properties at any moment, sell everything and cash out on a real big payday. You can You know what? Okay, wait, my, wait, okay. my clients used to hope for that. That's exactly what I used to tell them in two thousand and four. Listen, you buy five apartments, they're leased out. You rehab them. You hold on to them. And then 10 years from now, you can sell and make all your money and, and retire. Well, you're not. You're, you're, you're missing, and then the market crashed. You're missing the point. And I went to prison. Look, you're missing the point here. Okay. I'm going to show you what the point is. Let's go back to. I'm going to show you what the point is. Okay. Let's. Is that. Was it. Where was it? Where's the strategy? 
The brr? Oh yeah, there is the brr. All right, hold on. I'm gonna, let's, 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 is that an actual on, thing? What the burn strategy is, are you buying property, you're going to renovate the property, rent the property out, refinance it, then repeat. Okay, let me, let me just explain something to you. Okay, from a lender perspective. Now, this is a strategy that sounds amazing, Yeah, but doesn't work. Let me tell you why. Only because, here's why. Now I could make it work, but I would be buying the the I would be buying the properties. Uh, um, I would be buying the properties correctly, recording the sales incorrectly, and then I would be refinancing the property because of seasoning. That's correct. Okay, so when you buy a property, here's the issue with this, and that's why if some guy comes in and says, "Yeah, bro, I bought the property for a hundred thousand dollars. I renovated it. I got an appraisal. It was worth two hundred thousand, and I refinanced it and got all my money back." And if he told me he did that and it was less than one year, because you have to wait one year, you can refinance it immediately. But here's the, here's the underwriting guidelines. I buy it for $100,000. If I put $50,000 into the property and it will appraise at $200,000, the lender will only allow me to use the value of the home at the $100,000 I bought it for plus the fifty. dollars They won't let me use the $200,000 value. Not for one year. It's called seasoning. They want you to. They want to have the property seasoned in your name for one year. So, I can now, if I can prove I spent fifty grand, I can say okay, and it still has to appraise over the one fifty. If it appraises it, appraises it one fifty, they'll let me use one fifty as long as I can say I bought it for a hundred. I can prove that. Put fifty in it. I can prove that. They'll say okay, we'll go with one fifty. But he's saying, but he, these guys—they're not going to refinance a hundred percent of the value. No, they're also only going to give you because you don't live in the property. Correct. It is. It's an investment property, so they're going to give you maybe seventy to eighty percent. I was if, just going to say if you are I was lucky, say, maybe eighty yeah. percent. If you're lucky, but let's benefit of the doubt. Eighty percent. What is you know they're going to get eighty percent. Of um of the eighty percent of one fifty, so he's got one hundred and fifty in it. He's gonna get um one hundred and twenty thousand dollars back with that. That's eighty percent of one fifty. So he just lost thirty thousand dollars. So he had to come up with the the hundred thousand to buy the property and the fifty thousand. Now maybe he got a hard money lender. Maybe the hard money lender lent him the money, and then he refinanced it. In which case, if he refinanced it at that point. He would, he probably, he might be okay, but the God, there's just the no way. Listen. I mean, it's even, even that, that number, he's still losing at least 10 to $20,000, even at the, because if the hard money lender goes off the 200, it's going to be 130, 130 minus the closing cost. Minus, by the time he's done, he's still losing and, every property. And this is the problem, man. It does sound good. It, it sounds great. I would but, love to do that. But you need some financial knowledge to make these deals work right. well, also. Oh, you are looking at short-term capital gains, long-term capital gains. You are looking at the appreciation no, no, no. of the property no. that is going to go against your taxes. I mean, not saying any of that stuff. You may actually end up owing a shitload of money to the government yeah, when you no, sell or when you liquidate or you sell all these assets. Yeah. You, well, here, here's the, the other thing is this. Um, to get the loan... The eighty percent loan from the bank a year after you purchase the property. So to get the eighty yeah. percent, you have to qualify for it. Now you do own the property, so it's just a simple refi. But here's the problem: you have to have oh, I you have to have credit score, high credit scores. Correct. You have to have um, you have to have been on your job for two years. You have to be able to prove that your your debt to income ratio works well enough that you can afford to pay the mortgage on this. Um, you also have to have perfect uh, rental history for two years. You know, there's a no, and I'm gonna throw another curve at you. This may work with the first rental, oh, but on but your it's a second nightmare one, by the second, they're, by the they're third, gonna, you're by gonna the fifth. refinance about seventy percent. The third one about fifty percent. The fourth one you're not gonna refinance. Yeah, no. no. L- listen, most uh, most banks will only allow you to refinance about. About five to ten properties. So you know what the solution to this is? Not just that, but you understand. One more thing. One more thing is that that means that every year you have to have claimed all of your rental income, all your depreciation. You have to have perfect credit for every one of these. And you have to – your income has to continue to grow enough to make sure you continue to debt to income ratio. There is one way to make this work the way they want it to work. Oh, One uh, way. Oh, wait, I know. Fraud. Fraud. <laughs> Fraud. Like, listen, Correct. my ex-wife Correct. had over... Had I've over, done this. 
oh, well, I did. Listen, my ex-wife, my ex-wife had got 50, it was actually 54, 54 rental units within one year. And I can tell you right now, total fraud. Let me tell you, you want to talk about credit manipulation? I, I'm, I have people that used to take the mortgages off the credit, and they will apply again, and then take care of the credit, and then they will apply over and over and oh, over. We got another video. They, oh, the, next oh video is, the next video is right down your alley. I mean, this one's my, down my alley because I, I understand that, that he's skimming over a lot of this. Because and, 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 he, like I said, I'm not questioning the knowledge. What I want the viewers to know is it's not that easy. If, it's not only that easy. If you really want to go that route and you're willing to do whatever it takes to get this done, I need you to either contact me or Matt so we can calculate how much time you're going to do in yeah, federal yeah, I prison. Will, I will do your pre-sentence report. Absolutely, because it's a guideline. So depending on how many properties you do this with, well, yeah. and I'll tell you what. Whether you get sophisticated means, did you did you leave the jurisdiction to evade detection? Did you watch Big Herc's video? Yeah. Are you going to snitch or not? Did All you, that has a lot to do with did it. Did you use a, a specialized instrument? By the way, you can get a, a, a two-point enhancement for using a specialized instrument in your fraud, and that is simply the computer. Correct, the internet. Did you use the internet? Can you read? Yeah. Oh, sophisticated. Right. That's an extra two points, which is depending on where your criminal Did history you use is. Five, five banks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's five victims. Oh yeah, that's five case. victims right there. Everybody so, that you've talked to is basically. So yeah. So you're gonna victim. end up doing four or five years. But I tell you what, after five years, you can sell your assets and you can do whatever he says to you know to live your yeah, happy life. Yeah. Well, that's assuming that they don't just take every single thing you which have, they which could. they will. Okay. So let's. Uh, Oh, okay, so I don't know God, what's man. going on with I'm your cell phone. I'm telling you, man, I, I think your viewers got a call on my, uh, I'm on a, my cell phone, and they're calling me to tell me that I suck. I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and continue to play this from Colby. I'm going to play it from 4 minutes and 29 seconds, and I know everybody's screaming and hollering right now. Uh, okay, so. Keep that process. If you do that over and over and over again, you'll be able over to build over up over your again. network. Over you can liquidate over all the properties over. at any moment, sell everything, and cash out on a real big payday. You can get what's called a bank statement loan if you haven't done your taxes. You can get with a lender. They are pre-approved you just based off of your income. Okay, this is a problem. Based on what income? No, based off your... Yeah, Income. He if just, you haven't done your taxes, right? He said a specific lenders out here that you gotta, you know. You gotta let me take this one. Yeah, from yeah, the top yeah, list. yeah. I, 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 hold on. And they'll approve you for an FHA or conventional loan, just like anybody else. Now the catch is, you just gotta put a little bit more money down. The specific yeah, lender that I have, up. if you got at least a six twenty, you gotta put down around twenty five percent of the purchase price. If you got a six forty and above, you can get away with only putting down ten percent. Okay. And they're not checking your taxes at all. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds good. That's amazing. Man. All right, so this is <laughs> this is fraud. I was an I FHA approved lender. Listen, that's a straight. First fraud of all, statement. I think people need to understand that FHA is not a loan. It's an insurance policy on a loan. Right. Okay. So this guy is saying, if you haven't done your you taxes, have to go by FHA guidelines. Correct. Right. Okay. If you haven't done your taxes, they will go based on your income. Yeah, that's, what that's, income that's, are we talking about? That doesn't make sense. Well, it does make sense. It makes sense if you're lying about your income and you don't have taxes to prove them. Right, but he's saying, like, how do they determine what your income is if you're not providing them with, with your, your taxes? He's saying bank statements. But there's no FHA bank statement program that I know of. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and go, since I'm about 99.99% positive, that the federal government is not going to insure a loan product that they believe is fraud is fraudulent especially after the 2008 financial crisis which proved tons of people were, these are called liar loans correct and, and look there are financial institutions out there that are doing them at a certain level where they're doing kind of doing it a little bit but you have to have perfect credit you have to like you have to and, have and you years. understand that the liability is on you if that property defaults, they're going to be knocking on your door and they're going to tell you, listen, if you were in the financial position to buy this property and pay for it, why is it in foreclosure right now? So this whole part of, of, of the video, it's, it's, this is where it gets very dangerous, man. This is when the information can get people in trouble. Yeah. I, 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 by the way, I'd like to also mention the liar loans, you know, where these guys were saying, hey... I'm going to go in. I can't, I can't provide my W-2s or pay stubs. I can't prove my, prove my taxes. I'm going to go in, but I'm going to tell you that I make enough money. And that's my point. That's a liar loan. Well, that's what they're saying. So, by the way, uh, there's a guy named um, John LeBron. Oh, my God. I know John LeBron. 26 years. Went to trial. 
got 26 years. Yeah. Still in prison. And he, his whole thing was, he said, look, I went to the broker. The broker said whatever he said on the application. I provided Correct. He told me it was a no-doc loan. So when they indicted John Wall. By the way, he did that over and over and over yeah, and over. Like these guys it's, say. It's millions. It's, millions. It's, it's, it's millions, millions. Yes. John LeBron said, I haven't done anything wrong. I am going to trial. And he did, and God bless him, because it's the right thing to do if you truly believe you you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. guess what? John LeBron lost at trial. And John LeBron got 20. He got the only reason I'm under 26 because he got the same sentence as me. And he got, and I don't know how many, it was 15, 20, 30 million. I forget how many millions it was. I, you know what? I don't know that it was. Mine was uh no, I yours have was to. outrageous. Yours but was but outrageous. this is one thing that I, like at the beginning of the video, I said this. Are you willing to say that statement, that statement that you just said in front of a federal agent? Use as an informational, listen, let's call an agent yeah. and let me tell him my buying strategies. See if they work or they don't work. This thing right here, this, this strategy about being an entrepreneur, and, and this, is, that, this, is a, this is a crime. Do not, please, if you're watching this, do not engage in this kind of behavior right. unless you want to go to prison. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an issue. And I know people that it's been an issue for. Yeah. But listen. Remember again, Carlton Sheets? Yeah. But Carlton, it sounds good. This sounds good. Carlton Sorry. Sheets had to, he disappeared because they were investigating him and they were going to indict him because of his no, no money down uh, strategy well, to buy real estate, which was basically you inflate the price. Kind of like, you know, yeah, yeah. what we all used to oh, do. Oh, listen, I, I knew, uh, God, what was, I forget the guy, other guy that was, there was a guy that was there. He was so arrogant. Um, gosh, I forget his name. Not Kevin Trudeau. No, no, it was tall, Who thin. Who else was doing time? Tall, thin, white guy, real estate crime, went to trial, got like 30 years. So same thing, just to, just like, like you know, unwilling to accept the fact that what you were doing was criminal. And, and the fact is, is this guy, these, what this, this is basically, look, look, look maybe there's... By the way, they're not committing a crime. No, they're they're just, saying whatever they want to say. Right, and look, they, but the fact is, I don't know where this bank exists. It's certainly not an FHA loan. No. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'd love to talk to these guys and say, where is that? You know, and, and you know what they'd say to me? Well, if if you go to my fans only page, if Correct. you go to my fans only account and sign up, we can talk about that. But my, I promise, I told you, I have a buddy that signed up with him to talk to him on the phone, uh, Kevo, and he said, Kevo, he's like, he didn't have any information. He wouldn't tell me anything. You so he got me to pay five hundred bucks because it doesn't exist. Right? It's not true. Yeah, he can't tell you where to go. Here's it's where impossible. you go. It's impossible. Here's it. But listen, we got other videos we're gonna do, and he does have some good information. Some of it, a lot of it, like it, it, take it with a grain of salt. But a lot of it, Kevo is, is a guy. Kevo is a guy with a with a. The big FG okay. thing. What, what is this? F, what is FG? I don't, don't know. Don't say anything mean. Don't fraud, mean. fraud gangster or fraud something like that? Fraud guy. Fraud guy. Maybe fraud No. There you go. Stop. Or a fall guy. So, no, I don't think he's, well, this guy here is the fall guy. Okay, so, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good stuff. I would love to talk to these guys. Yeah, but I want um, the strategy. I want, like, the, give me the, the blueprint. Yeah, where's the, I want to talk to this lender. The, I want to talk to this lender. First, I want to go to the city where I can find that motivated seller. Yeah, let's yeah. start with that one. The one who's selling his, his two hundred thousand dollar piece of property for 15, 15, grand. fifteen grand. Right now, in this nice. market, right now. Then I want to talk to. Then I want the crew. I want to meet the crew that is going to do the rehab. Yeah, for and, and get and by the way, not get paid up front. Well, so they're, they're, they're going to the do all the work and then they're going to wait a couple of days to get paid. You know how many times that's happened to me? And they always, as soon as they're done, like, bro, I need the money, bro, I need the money, brother. You said you'd wait three days to get the. Did you ever watch a show called uh, Undercover Billionaire? The yeah. first season, not the, se the second season. So I watched uh, one or two episodes. The first season, the guy does this. He, he buys an apartment and he flips it and he sells it and he convinces somebody to do the work for him. But they're, first of all, they're splitting the profits. And this guy went to the bank and he had good credit and they gave him a line of credit. So it, it's, this is not a strategy. First of all, this strategy doesn't work. But a lot of these strategies are not for broke people. No, no, no. You have to have some you money. You have to have some money in the bank. No. And, and we'll talk about that when he talks about his credit, because a okay. lot of it he's like talks about getting secure credit cards, and he's like, "Yeah, so go to the bank and put down twenty grand." 20, oh first God. of all, the secure credit card, by the way, it like says up to nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, but that's Correct. fine. Whatever, that's fine. So let's say it's twenty thousand dollars secure credit card. Like, and that's who's obsolete. Got and, grand? and today, today, that's obsolete. Right. You've what? Well, you've got twenty grand to put. Yeah. If you got twenty grand, how do you have bad credit? But anyway, okay. So we'll talk about that. I think this is it. I think we're good. All right, listen. So uh, if you like the video, do me a fav favor and subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the bell. Leave a nasty comment for me because I just love those. Yes, please. And please do. Say something mean about uh, um, about Juan here because I would love to share the hate. And I really appreciate it. And if anybody knows Bandman Kivo or this other guy with him, 
They're very stylish. Let them know to check out the video. I'd love to hear what they have to say, yeah. and I'd love to talk to them in person. And, and listen, I'm going to throw something out there. If you have any questions about what we just said. Any questions. Any questions, just put them in there. We'll answer them for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll answer them. We'll answer them. I, I might even leave Juan's email so you can leave uh, in, in the description so you can you can uh, focus on him instead of leaving <laughs> sending me mean stuff. It, it, it might just happen. All right, that's it. I appreciate you guys watching and see ya. <laughs>